Excuse me, Thea. Aren't you home right now? No, I'm with Angel at the hospital. But it's evening already. Ahem, aren't you forgetting something, wifey? What about preparations for supper? Surely you don't intend on forcing my poor son to make his own supper? No, my husband will be coming to meet me at the hospital as soon as he gets off work. He's just finishing up his last bits now. We're gonna go back home together afterwards, which is when I'll make a supper. My friend just stopped by your house. Huh? Your friend came to our house? Uh, why? She said she had some business to take care of in the neighborhood. I said that you'd give her a lift home in your car. It's a long way, and there's no reason she should have to make her own arrangements with you living so close by. What? This is the first I've heard of it. Because I didn't tell you. Valerie, look, I'm sorry, but I'm not at home all the time. I have things of my own to do, and a life of my own to lead. You can't just go around making promises to people on my behalf. I thought you'd be home because you should be making preparations for supper like a good wife right about now. My friend stopped by your house when I said you'd take her, but she said you weren't there, and now she's complaining at me. Do you have any idea how much embarrassment you've caused me, young lady? I told you this before, but I come to the hospital to be with Angel whenever I have time. I told you you're better off just assuming I won't be home. Please stop making promises on my behalf. If anything, being at home is the exception these days. Deary me, you really are spoiling that girl. Angel's going to grow up to have terrible manners and a poor work ethic if you're not careful. Just because she's ill doesn't mean you have to go to the hospital to see her every single day. She needs to learn what it means to be independent. She's a little girl. Besides, I have no idea whether her condition will deteriorate in the future. Any time I get to spend with her is valuable. Please don't say such awful things about your granddaughter. What are you so worried about? She's been sickly since she was born. This is hardly anything new. The doctors have made it abundantly clear that she isn't going to live that long. You'd think you'd have to come to terms with it by now. Is that why you think I shouldn't go and see her? That's not what I'm saying. Stop being overly dramatic and trying to paint me as some cruel, heartless villain. I'm just saying you don't have to base your entire life in every decision you make around her. You should be more considerate towards what the other people in your life want, like me. What's the point in you having a car if you only use it to go to and from the hospital? The least you could do is take me on holiday to a hot spring resort or to the theater or to the beach from time to time. I'm devoting all of the time I can to Angel right now. My husband's with me on this one. Is he really? I wonder. He knows that no matter what he says or does, you'll only ignore him and spend all your time with the girl. Are you sure he isn't just going along with it because he knows how stubborn you are and he's afraid how you might react? Absolutely not! How could you even suggest that? Angel's the most important thing to both of us. She's our number one priority. My god, you really are stubborn, young lady. Angel's a girl. What sense is there in wasting your time waiting hand and foot on her like she's some princess? What does her gender have to do with anything? Everything! At least if she was a boy, you could raise her as the successor to my son's company. Hopefully you'll fulfill your duty as a wife and provide me with a grandson before long. I'm sorry, Valerie, but to be honest with you, that's the last thing on my mind right now. I'm gonna go help the nurses with Angel's dinner now, so if you excuse me, I have to go. No, you excuse me, young lady. I am not done speaking with you. Don't you dare. My friends are going to the mall this week, and I want to go with them. There's a new clothes shop I want to check out. I will not be the old one out of my friend group, so be a darling and come pick me up. I'll let you make up for not taking my friend home today, because I'm kind like that. So what do you say? 
I told you I can't. Please use the bus or the train like everyone else. I have no intention of leaving Angel's side. Thea, listen to this. You're never going to believe it. My favorite singer, Lady Goo Goo, is performing in Peepsville next week. You know, the next town on from ours. Apparently, she's holding a huge concert out on the field of a local business faculty. You'll be a darling and take me, won't you? Valerie, I know David told you about how Angel's health is taking a turn for the worse lately. Why would you ask me this? Yes, he said she could die at any moment. So what? Oh my god. How could you say that? Are you seriously asking me to take you to some stupid concert even though you know how things are with her? It's next week, so you have plenty of time to make arrangements. And Lady Goo Goo is not stupid. How dare you? Stop being awkward, young lady. It's not like I'm asking you to drop everything on the spot and pick me up right now, is it? Jeez, lighten up. Even so, I don't think it's appropriate for you to ask me this now. So when will it be appropriate? Am I just supposed to wait around forever while life passes me by? How many times have the doctors told you Angel's in a bad way by now? I lost count. I'm sure she'll be back to normal within two or three days. We don't know whether she will or she won't. That's the point. Would you just stop this already? I'm stressed out enough as it is. Wow. Why do I have to take this from you? Why are you getting mad at me all of a sudden? You have severe attitude problems, young lady. Because this isn't the kind of thing you ask someone when their daughter is in the hospital bed and might not make it. Me and David have been sleeping by her bedside at the hospital all week. Not my problem. What does any of this have to do with me? Angel's your granddaughter. What good is a sickly little girl who lives in a hospital bed to me? It's been too long since I met her. I don't even remember what she looks like. With this sorry state of affairs, I may as well not even have any grandchildren. Anyway, you'll be a darling and take me to the concert, won't you? Mildred from next door said she wants to come too, so make sure you clean the car out first. I don't want you embarrassing me by having it full of empty sweet wrappers. How many times do I have to say it? I can't take you! Then how am I supposed to get there? I can't go to Peepsville without a car, it's just too far. The trains don't go there and the bus is for peasants. You can't seriously expect me to associate with the lower orders. My husband said he can't possibly take me and refused flat out. You're the only one I have left to rely on. You'll be a darling and take me, won't you, sweetie? I can't possibly take you either. Ugh, stop it with this petulant stubbornness. All you have to do is drop me off at the venue and pick me up when it's over. Even if I did get on the bus with the filthy common folk, the timetable is awkward and I'd be stood waiting around outside the concert for hours. That's not my concern. Figure it out yourself. You are the most useless human being I've ever encountered in all of my years. Ugh. I wish my son never married you to begin with. What good are you? What purpose do you serve? You're useless! I'm a mother before I'm a wife. What would you have done if David had fallen seriously ill when he was young? Surely you'd have done whatever you could to be by his side as much as possible? Yes, I suppose I probably would. Because he's my son and the successor to the family name. I certainly wouldn't waste my time with the likes of a little girl, though. And I don't know why you are either. I've heard enough of this. I have nothing more to say to you. Don't contact me again. You didn't give me an answer. You'll be a sweetie and take me to the concert, won't you, darling? Won't you? Find your own way there. How dare you! We accepted you into this family as my son's wife! You are in no position to disobey your mother-in-law! This is your fault for giving birth to a sickly little girl in the first place! Why should I suffer for your defective genes? 
Don't drag me into your mess. I have a right to see that concert. Are you listening to me? Reply at once. Ugh, you will pay for this. Damn you. Thea, I just heard the news from David. What happened to Angel is so terribly unfortunate. I'm so sorry. Right. Don't let it get you down, sweetie. You can just have more children. Right? Right? Let's get to work on the next one. Excuse me? You heard me. Wait, you don't plan on giving up on having children because of this, do you? You can't do that. You still haven't had a son. I'm not thinking about that sort of thing at all right now. Angel just died. I know that. That's why I'm trying to cheer you up. How could you even say anything like that? You're despicable. You're the worst. Yes, yes. I can tell you're very emotional right now, sweetie. It's okay. Anyway, you need to get work on conceiving my grandson as soon as the funeral is over with. Lord knows that's the only thing you're good for. I told you, I can't bring myself to think about that sort of thing right now. The funeral isn't even over yet. Duh, I know that, moron. That's why I very clearly said you need to get to work on conceiving my grandson after the funeral's done with. I'm not telling you to do anything now, am I? You need some time to grieve your daughter. It makes no difference. Oh, there is just no talking to you. Why is everyone being so depressing about this? You think Angel would want you to be all gloomy and miserable? I won't be wasting my time by going to the funeral or the cremation. If this is your attitude, I have no interest in associating with you. You're rude, you're disrespectful, you're insolent, and you're just downright unpleasant. I'm ashamed to call you my daughter-in-law. I see. You've made how you feel towards me very clear. If you find me that pleasant, I'd rather you didn't come to the funeral. These last few years have been so difficult for me because of that sickly daughter of yours. Angel this, angel that. She practically had the whole family under her spell. She even stole my own husband and my son. Neither of them ever had the time of day for me where she was concerned. And obviously you were never willing to help me with anything. You wouldn't take me to see my friends, you wouldn't take me shopping or out on day trips. You all neglected me for that damn kid. Not a single good thing has happened to me these last few years, and it's all because of her. At least now with her gone, you might finally start helping me out when I ask for favors. I have to get ready for the wake now. Goodbye. Oh no you don't. Hold your horses, young lady. Why? Do you accept that this is all your fault? If you'd have just given birth to a healthy child in the first place, none of this would be happening. Wow. You think I didn't want my child to be healthy? I already blame myself enough for what happened without you twisting the knife. Oh, you do have some self-awareness then. Color me surprised. Just make sure it doesn't happen again. This family's been through enough because of you. Why don't you just try producing a healthy child next time? You're evil. Pure evil. It's the only way I can explain how you could say such horrible things. Excuse me, did I say something bad? You better not come to the funeral. I mean it. I told you, I don't want to. I wouldn't come if you paid me. Why would I? It's not like I have any positive memories of Angel. Oh, silly me, I almost forgot. Lady Google's concert is tomorrow. Albert's wife is going to be taking us. I'll have to start getting ready. I'll probably sleep like a baby now, knowing that all my worries are a thing of the past. Isn't that just so sweet of Albert's wife? At least some wives are nice. It's nice to know not everyone's as useless as you. It's been a while, Thea. Yes, it has. Can't you even say hello to your mother-in-law properly? You're not still down in the dumps over what happened, are you? 
Her funeral was a whole month ago now, sweetie. It's time to move on. You can't dwell on the past forever. It's not what she'd want. Yes, it's still only been a month. Her body's still barely cold, and you dare tell me to move on. Stop being so dramatic. Surely you're at least feeling a little more level-headed than you were immediately after it happened. I hope you are, because it's time to get to work soon. I do hope you won't let me down again. Good luck, sweetie. I have absolute faith in you. What are you talking about? My grandson! Hurry up and show me my delightful grandson's cute face. Angel was never your grandchild as far as you were concerned, was she? Obviously not. Not only was she terribly sickly and frail, but she lived in the hospital. And that's not even to mention the gender. To be frank, I consider her to be unrelated to me from the moment I learned she was a girl. Anyway, forget all that. It's time for you to start focusing on popping out the next one, young lady. Make sure it's a boy this time, no matter what. There are some things you just don't say. You have no idea what it means to be a decent human being, do you? Part of me didn't want to accept that my husband's own mother could be such a despicable piece of crap. But there's no denying it. You're beyond saving. Excuse me? You still didn't notice, did you? No one wants anything to do with you anymore. When's the last time you saw your husband? Huh? Hmm, now that you mention it, I haven't seen much of him at all over the last few days. He said he wouldn't be home for a while because he's busy with work. He's still not home, is he? So what? We all go through busy periods. If he has work, he has work. It can't be helped. He always did go away on business a lot. I'm used to it. What are you getting at here? It's not unusual for him to be out of the house for days and weeks at a time. Your husband left you. He's currently making preparations to divorce you. What are you talking about? That's crazy talk. You're twisted. Don't even joke about that kind of thing, young lady. It's the truth. He gave me permission to tell you everything I'm telling you now. Why on earth would my husband divorce me? We've been together for 30 years, I'll have you know. 30 years! That's nearly longer than you've existed, you little witch! Why? Because of your attitude towards Angel. You refuse to have anything to do with your own granddaughter purely due to the fact that she was a girl. You made fun of her for being weak and sickly. You refused to visit her in the hospital even once before she died. You didn't even go to her freaking funeral. He just couldn't overlook the way you acted towards her, no matter how hard he tried. Why would my husband divorce me over the girl? It was hardly my fault she was so weak and sickly, was it? This is exactly the kind of attitude he couldn't tolerate. Your husband loved Angel more than anything. He spoiled her rotten, was it always coming over for visits and buying her gifts. He warned you about the way you were acting countless times. He wanted you to change. I was even there when he did it sometimes. Please, won't you just speak a little more respectfully towards your granddaughter? He tried, but it was useless. What are you saying? That I should love my grandchildren no matter what? It's hardly my fault she was so unlikable. Why should I be punished? I'm not necessarily saying you had to love her unconditionally. But it would have been nice if you at least didn't pick on and make fun of her for having an illness. Or make mean-spirited, disparaging comments about her whenever you felt like it. When you knew full well that she could hear you. You're free to think what you'd like to think about people within the confines of your own mind. That doesn't mean you have to say every little nasty remark that pops into your head when you know damn well no one wants to hear it. I can't help being honest. I say what's on my mind. What's the problem with that? The fact that you don't even seem to understand why everyone's sick of you probably has something to do with why you're being divorced. Me, David, your husband, none of us want anything to do with you ever again. We're cutting you out of our lives forever. What does my son David have to do with this? He was Angel's dad. We all loved that girl. You don't have a single ally in this family anymore. You've burned all of your bridges beyond repair. Never contact any of us again. Wait a sec. Hold your horses, young lady. 
My husband isn't answering my calls. What on earth is going on? I'm getting nothing but voicemail. That's because he blocked you. He told me to tell you you'll be hearing from his lawyer once he's done finalizing the divorce procedures. Come to think of it, David hasn't been responding to me lately either. What exactly is going on here? He hasn't been ignoring me the whole time too, has he? Yes, I was also considering blocking you myself, but I couldn't resist the urge to be the one to tell you about your family abandoning you. I can't deny that this all has been very satisfying. I'm glad I didn't block you. I also wanted to let you know that this is all 100% your own fault. I'll never forget how you absurd and victimized me. Thea, please, wait, this is all going too far. Just hang on a moment. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please. Will you tell my husband and son I apologized? Tell them to unblock me. I'm begging you. Like hell, I'm telling them that. Anyway, even if I did tell them, it wouldn't change anything. They didn't block you because I told them to. They blocked you because you're toxic and poisonous. Because you're evil, malicious, and mean-spirited. If there's something you desperately need to say, I suggest you tell it to the lawyer your husband hired. Oh no you don't! I won't speak to my own husband through a damn lawyer! Let's all discuss this together as a family! Family? <laughs> oh, that's funny. You seem to be making a misunderstanding. Because not a single one of us thinks of you as family anymore. Stop speaking to me like that! I am your mother-in-law! That still makes me your mother, young lady! I never thought of you as my mother-in-law, even from the beginning. What? I mean, come on, why would I? The bullying started as soon as I married David and we moved in together. You mocked and ridiculed me. You insulted my daughter because she was born with an illness. You looked down on both of us. You made me feel worthless for not giving you a grandson. In law or not, someone who treats me and my family like that is no mother of mine. That's fine by me, though. After all, you never acknowledged Angel as your granddaughter, did you? Why should I acknowledge you as my mother-in-law? I'm free to think what I like of you. Thea, I'm so, so sorry. I can't apologize enough for my horrible attitude towards Angel, really. I feel terrible about everything. <sighs> too little too late. Angel's never coming back. I'll never do anything like this again, I swear. I'll think about my behavior. I'll change. Please, just give me another chance. You're free to think about your behavior and change. And honestly, I hope you do. But you're not getting another chance. We meet it when we say we're washing our hands of you. You're not our problem anymore. I hope you use this as a lesson and become a better person. How am I supposed to live without my family? My husband's divorcing me. And my David, my David cutting me out of his life forever. Oh, the horror. I can't do this, Thea. Please, I'm old and frail. Please don't do this to me. I'm begging you, Thea. I'll do anything. Help me. I'll do anything. If you'll really do anything, then forget about us and leave us in peace and lead our lives without you. You don't deserve our help, and you're not getting it, so just give up. You're nothing but a stranger to us now. Valerie's husband made it clear he wanted to divorce her, but being as stubborn as ever, she refused to meet him halfway, and he was left no choice but to take her to divorce court. Now, this is quite ironic for someone who has harped on so much about womanly duties, but apparently she never did the housework and she was always out drinking with her friends. Not only that, but she was constantly abusive to Tim and made all kinds of hurtful remarks that led to pretty significant deterioration in his mental state. Sounds like divorce had just been a long time coming. Eventually, the judge deemed her to be at fault and her husband's case was acknowledged. With that, she has no choice but to go through with the divorce. Last I heard, she was living alone at the house she was awarded as part of the alimony while looking for work to support herself. As far as I know, she never had a job in her life, so things could get difficult for her. David and his dad told the whole family about her behavior, and when word made its way to her group of friends, she became a sociopath. And now, she doesn't have a soul to rely on in the world. It's amazing how quickly rumors spread, and a little while, the tale of the wicked stepmother was all you'd hear about at family gatherings. 
I'm just relieved it's a story we can reminisce over because when it was really happening, it was hell. With no means to support herself and no marketable skills to speak of, we don't know how she intends to support herself alone from here on out. But to be honest, we don't care. She isn't our problem anymore. No matter how hard life is for her now, no matter how much she struggles and no matter how much she begs us, we won't be lifting a finger to help her. Me and David moved away immediately after Angel passed away, and Valerie's husband followed suit. We all live in the same neighborhood now and are always there to support each other. I'll never forget the empty, heartbreaking sadness of losing my daughter. But she didn't just leave me with sadness. She also filled my heart with beautiful, joy-filled memories, which I'll cherish and hold dear forever, until it's my last time to join her. I want to start thinking positively about the future now. I like to think Angel is watching down on us all from heaven, and I want to live a life that makes her proud. As anyone who's experienced the pain of losing a child knows, it never gets easier. But me and David are committed to overcoming our struggles and carving out a life filled with love and happiness. Thank you for watching! Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.